Erling Haaland might be happening. Let me just say it one more time. Erling Haaland might become a Chelsea player. You need to stay tuned for this one. This is not clickbait. This is not false advertisement. This came out of a reliable source's mouth and I'm starting to believe. I am fully starting to believe. Welcome to the Kafkazi and days like this, I'm flabbergasted. Listen, when I was growing up, and when I said it wasn't a long time ago, right? We read everything in the newspaper. We would read everything in the newspaper, the early noughties. There is no internet like this. There is no transfer rumors. There's no, not that many TV shows where people are actively giving us information that we need to understand. This information about Erling Haaland is a massive. You guys need to stay tuned here. We're gonna talk about Sal Nunez once again being linked to a Chelsea and, oh, bruh. Erling Haaland's the main theme of this video. We all know why you guys came here. So let's get into it. But before we get started, make sure you do hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. And in the comments below, 154 million pounds, right? Is it worth for Erling Haaland? That's 172 million euros. Madness, absolute madness. So quick background check. Erling Haaland is from Norway. You know that. Erling Haaland's father was a footballer played for Norway as an international. His teammate, a striker, Jan Arja Fjortov, difficult name to pronounce, I tried to so hard, difficult name to pronounce, played for Norway, now he works for ESPN FC on a very good show, I'm not gonna lie to you, right? The analysis isn't great, but they're entertaining as hell. You got Stevie Nichols, Craig Burley, Shaka Hislop, one of my favorite people on that show, Ali Moreno, Lukaku, Lukaku. Hilarious, absolutely hilarious. Jan Agafiotov is one of the newer people, he's got good sources, and one of those sources is a direct link to Erling Haaland. He is a very good friends with Erling pa Haaland's father, who is the agent of Erling Haaland. You see a direct link there. He's always in the loop with what's going on with the career. Yesterday, casual, little, little bit extra little snippet of ESPN FC, question comes in, and this is what he said. He basically says, a few clubs are actively pursuing this player. A few clubs are actively interested and he name drops Porto. And why is Porto relevant? The city of Porto, why is it relevant? Because Chelsea played the Champions League final there and his reaction was super interesting in the way he said it. He's basically insinuating that if the fee is agreed, that won't be an issue. Chelsea are willing to pay the money, it's the wages that will be an issue. And the wages are something that can get met. People, you need to understand, if Chelsea wants someone, Chelsea go and get that person. Nine out of 10 times, if Chelsea actively want that player, Roman Abramovich gets that player. It happened with numerous players, right? Kai Havertz is the perfect example. Eden Hazard, N'Golo Kante. When we want a player, big man, you're coming. Diego Costa, Cesc Fabregas. It don't matter who's competing with us. We get the player because we're a big club and we got the checkbook to deal with it. The important thing that we need to confirm here, and for me, that is very important, is that ESPN FC, the reporter is reliable. How much more reliable can it get? And the wages being an issue, 100% I believe it. Think about it logically, right? Mino Raiola is gonna want a good cut. Then you're gonna have Haaland who's gonna demand crazy wages because that's what Mino does for his clients. And Chelsea are gonna have to put an outlay of 172 million pounds when Dortmund don't wanna sell. It makes sense. And a lot of you are gonna be very intelligent or very smart and you're gonna ask me right now, but Alex, the real thing is why don't we just wait a year and sign him on a discount when the release clause activates? I agree with that. I understand the logic behind it, but this is the key and this is the key that we need to consider, right? Next year, we're gonna have a lot of clubs coming out of post-pandemic with a lot of money generated and Chelsea aren't gonna be wanting to get into a bidding war. The likelihood is, it's better to pay a transfer fee than get into a bidding war with wages. The reason being, if you get in a bidding war with wages, one thing and one thing only happen. His wages keep increasing, agent fees keep increasing, and next thing you know, you are stuck in a contract that is unmovable in the future, or you're stuck in a contract that just causes so much unrest in your current structure. For example, imagine we put him on 600K a week. Kai Havertz, Mason Mount, Callum Hudson-Odoi, Rhys James, when they come up to renew, they're gonna want contracts, not near enough that number, but 400K minimum, and it ruins the squad structure, it ruins just the way structure, but, is Haaland worth it? That's what we need to ask ourselves. So to basically sum up for you guys, this is it. Erling Haaland is linked with Chelsea. The deal is likely to go ahead if Chelsea were willing to break their wage structure. Do I believe this move was gonna happen? I'd still say no, but 
Do I, am I more confident now than I've ever been in the past? 100% yes. Think about it logic. This is basically his dad's friend who knows him very well. This whole saga was consistently talked about on ESPN FC. This is a reputable journalist. Fabrizio Romano hits that the, the like button. He must know something. He's got good, very good contact with Yanga or Fyrtov. His name is never gonna come out easy out my mouth. But, man, I'm excited, man. That's, and all of us should be excited because if you get a striker of that quality, we all of a sudden become favorites, man, for me in the Premier League. We can keep clean sheets, we'll get goals, and all of a sudden we become a top, top club. Like, please respect what we have. Erling Haaland is going to be one of the best forwards in world football when, it, when all is said and done, unless something goes drastically wrong. And he could potentially play for Chelsea. That's unreal. Like when you actually deep it, that is absolutely unreal. Look, one thing's for certain when it comes to Erling Haaland and the Chelsea board, they want a striker. We've been linked with way too many players. If you think about it realistically, Romelu Lukaku, he looks like he might be available. But at the same time, he's come out and said he wants to stay. We were linked with Lewandowski. We were linked with Aubameyang. We were linked with Erling Haaland, Daka. We are linked with a striker and it makes sense why. A lot of you said Giroud signed a new deal. Ha <laughs> ha, he's not leaving. Giroud signed a new deal, but there's a gentleman's agreement in place that is being widely reported that if another club comes in for Chelsea, they will let him go on a free transfer. No ifs, no buts, no maybes. Chelsea only signed him just in case they don't get a replacement. They have a forward for next year and Giroud's happy with that contract. It looks like Tammy Abraham is going to be leaving the club which is realistic and understandable. But all in all, it's just interesting, you know? Yeah, we actually have to deep it and be relaxed about it and cool because we are getting a striker. I don't know who that striker is gonna be. I don't know how we're gonna get that striker, but just have faith. Now onto the Saúl deal. Moving on, once again, Mundo Deportivo is linking Chelsea with the one and only Saúl Nunes. Saúl Nunes is a centre midfielder that plays for Atletico Madrid and I've told you this before in an earlier video when we first started being linked PSG and Bayern Munich want the guy the only issue is the fee is actually kind of substantial for a player that I'm not too convinced with for 65 to 70 million euros is a lot of money for an international Spanish international of a poor Spanish side at the moment but the beauty of Sal Nunez is he can do numerous positions and for me I think that is very important guy can play 10 the guy can play 8 the guy can play 6 and the beauty of him is he has good passing range, he's very decisive in a tackle, he's got a good engine on him, and most importantly, he can retain the ball very well. It's something that Tuchel looks for. For me, he's a mixture of uh, Jorginho and a Kovacic, in the sense that he can keep the ball ticking if you need it, he can dribble with the ball, but at the same time have the passing range of a Jorginho. And one thing he possesses that we don't have in our midfield is an absolute wonder of a left foot. He can bang it with value and interest. Literally, when he bangs it, there's no depreciation charge, bro. It's going straight top bit. Give him space at your peril. Very good player, very interested. Looks like he wants a new challenge. It'll be very exciting to see which clubs actually put up the money for him. Because at the end of the day, when you think about it, he's very expensive. I think he's 25, 26 years old, if I'm not mistaken. Really should have checked that before I started recording this segment. But it's an interesting signing. And I think he's already achieved what he wanted at Atletico Madrid. He won the league title. He's won, I think, Europa League. I think he came through their youth system as well. So it's time for a change, but there are a lot of clubs that are interested, but Atleti need the money. And they don't want to let Joao Felix go, so they're going to most probably let Sal go. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you don't keep it popping in the comments below. We are getting very close to that. 7,500 mark, let's push it up, let's keep growing, let's get to the 8k and then road to 10k stocks because 10k is close, it's not far, we can almost see it, we're pioneering towards it, peace out, I'm out, bye.